Wow, that is a nice picture. Ah, hey up there. So we have Samsung's new S95D OLED TV for 2024. And we're doing something with it that you wouldn't normally do with this kind of TV, but more on that later. So we're gonna check out all of the new features as well as some of the sound setups that Samsung has for 2024. So let's get into it. So we're at the Evola Hotel here in Sydney, and this room actually has skylights up here. It's got a big bank of windows. And the idea is that with OLED TVs, normally they're quite reflective because they have a big glass panel on the front of it. But this one is the world's first OLED TV with anti-reflective technology. And otherwise you would see these huge reflections coming from the window, or you'd see yourself reflecting when you're sitting in front of it. So this actually means that now we can recommend OLED televisions in really bright living rooms, which is, you know, in Australia and a lot of countries in the world where you've got a lot of sunlight, that's a real problem. And you'd normally choose a different type of TV. So Samsung actually had their anti-glare coating certified by underwriter laboratory. So it's the world's first certified anti-glare coating. What it actually is, is a hard embossed layer that then scatters light in different directions. And normally when you put a coating on a TV, it can affect the image quality, the color quality, or the brightness. But in this case, this is also a Pantone certified screen, meaning that it supports up to 2,030 Pantone colors. So it's still really accurate color-wise, uh, even with this coating and it's 20% brighter than the S95C, so that's the 2023 model. So it's getting brighter, colors are still accurate, but it actually cuts glare and is certified to. Um, I've got my phone with a little light on it, and you might be able to see here, you probably see some reflections, but believe me, this would be a really shiny reflection if it wasn't uh, ha having this coating on it. And actually does a really, really good job because there is a bank of windows right behind the camera and reflecting. Plus when the screen's off, it actually has a really nice matte surface too. So it looks good as well. So this is definitely a plus with this year's model. So 2024 sees more AI features in TVs and the S95D is no different. So it actually gets the NQ4 AI Gen 2 processor. Um, so this is kind of, it handles the picture quality as well as the sound, a lot of the enhanced features, meaning that you don't have to know the settings. It will optimize the settings for you. The long and short of it is that the chip uses neural networks to recognize what's on screen and to fine tune it so it looks its best. So this could be enhancing the contrast or the sharpness or uh, upscaling lower quality resolutions to the 4K resolution panel as well, plus figuring out how the sound works with everything else. So the TV I have here is a 77 inch model, but it does come in 55 and 65. So don't be put off if you have a smaller space. 77 is amazing and it's really quite immersive, but uh, all of the features across the board are supported on the smaller models. There are actually so many picture enhancements that the AI does. I mean, let's go through a few of them here. So we have real depth enhancer. Now this actually actually figures out the foreground and the background of a scene to make the foreground pop out a little more. So it enhances sort of the contrast and the colors. It doesn't add bokeh to the background, but it does sort of add to this 3D effect or this more realistic picture. And it is really noticeable. So there's Quantum HDR OLED Pro, which is all about making the sort of HDR brighter. Uh, so as I was mentioning before, the screen is 20% brighter than last year's model. But what Samsung has done is they've learned from, I guess, last year's model on how much they can push the technology to get that extra brightness out of it. But the net result is it really is quite a nice bright screen. Plus you were using Quantum Dot Technology too, meaning that the colors don't lose their vibrancy as they get brighter. So the picture is just amazing. Samsung's motion accelerator feature is that this screen now will do 144 hertz variable refresh rate that's up from 120 hertz for last year's model. So if you're a gamer, it means that you can play games up to 144 frames a second. So this is really for PC gamers. Console gamers, uh, don't, they don't need it. They're probably better at 120 hertz, but this is for people who have PCs and they wanna get the ultimate sort of gaming experience on a big OLED screen. I should mention that there are four HDMI 2.1 ports. So each of those supports 144 hertz. So for the health conscious out there, as well as people who just watch way too much TV, there is the eye comfort mode. And this is uh, for reducing eye strain by removing blue light out of the image uh, while still keeping colors accurate somehow. Uh, and it does this by figuring out where you are in the world, 
what time of day it is, and also it uses a, a sensor to figure out the ambient light in the room. So it'll calculate all of that and then just make the image more comfortable to look at. And for those who just love to tweak all the settings, there is an expert calibration mode. So you do this when you set the TV up initially and you use your smartphone, but you have to download Samsung's SmartThing apps and that is uh, both on iOS and Android. And it will actually use the camera in the phone to look at the TV and then calibrate it using, I guess, the room, taking into account the light that's in the room and all of that kind of stuff. And the expert calibration mode is even more advanced, giving you that really professional tune, because why not? You've spent a lot of money on this gorgeous looking screen, uh, which is, you know, Pantone color accurate. But you have to set that one up on a tripod, so you need to have the phone steady for that to actually work. So just keep that in mind. So Samsung's AI comes to gamers as well here with this TV. So there's AI gaming mode. And what it does is it identifies using AI the gaming type you're playing, but also the gaming title. So so it can identify if you're doing a first person shooter or if you're playing a real time strategy game, but also say you're playing Cyberpunk 2077. So it knows the game and then it can optimize all of the settings like your, your HDR settings or your color settings or even switch on auto low latency mode. Whatever it is, it will do it for you to get the game to look as good as possible or perform as quickly as possible on the screen. If you're not plugging in a console or a PC, you can use Samsung's Gaming Hub, where then you can stream games from Xbox or GeForce Now. Plus it connects to uh, all kinds of different Bluetooth controllers. It doesn't have to be just your Xbox and your PlayStation ones. It can be third party ones as well. And you can even stream music from Spotify while you're playing so you can have some background music. Samsung's little smart remote remains pretty similar from last year. It's just getting a little bit smaller, uh, a little bit more densely packed button wise. So it's easier to kind of thumb buttons when you're not looking at it. Otherwise the direct buttons are still there for Netflix and Disney and for Amazon Prime. Plus uh, on the back, we still have the really cool uh, solar charging port and it still does uh, do RF uh, harvesting where it can get some energy back from Wi-Fi networks and radio frequencies. So the Smart Hub gets a new tweak or two as well. It's not drastically different than the last year's models, but the idea is it's more adaptive, so it puts the things that you're watching up higher. Um, also, there's this new bar for Discover, uh, as well as Live, as well as Apps. Um, they do realize that you're probably watching streaming TV more than anything, but Live is kind of cool because it's all your free-to-air television, but as well as Samsung TV Plus Live content too, so you can kind of see that there. Discover is really more just about uh, the stuff that you watch most often. One thing is they've actually put the app bar a little lower because they realize that people want to get right into their content, um, and it just adjusts dynamically as you go. Right, so let's talk about sound. So this does see some improvements. First off, the TV speakers themselves are 70 watts in total, and there are speakers across the bottom, the sides, and the top. Now this supports Dolby Atmos, and it's real Dolby Atmos, meaning that it's not simulated. They're actually discrete channels for the speakers wherever they are. So you're getting your up firing, your side, and your down firing. So some real improvements there, plus, Depending on where you put it in the room, you can have it wall mounted or you can have it on a stand here. The speakers will auto calibrate for the space around it to tune themselves so they sound better. So if it's against the wall, it knows the speakers are closer to the wall and does some adjustments. And this happens every time you turn on the actual TV. So just the TV speakers itself are pretty good, but there are even more enhancements. So new this year is enhanced object tracking sound thanks to the AI processing. There are actually 20 neural units that analyze what's on the screen. So say for example, it can figure out that there's a helicopter and it's flying across the screen uh, and then it will make it so the speakers actually uh, have the sound move from left to right to follow that object. It's also really cool when someone's talking because it actually sounds like it's coming from their face or out of their mouth as opposed to just the screen as a whole. So what's a great TV without a great sound bar? This is the new top of the range Q990D Q series soundbar. This is an Atmos soundbar. It's 11.1.4 channels. So it has top firing, side firing, front corner firing, of course, speakers all along the front. It works in conjunction with the TV, thanks to Samsung's Q Symphony. Um, it is a pretty amazing soundbar. It also comes with two rears, as well as this massive, massive sub. 
Um, so the price is 2099 in Australia, and it has a lot of really cool features too. There's adaptive sound with active voice amplifier, and this just intelligently optimizes your sound and volume and clarity uh, for ambient noise levels that are in the room, so it can make things louder. If the uh, noise, say someone's turned a blender on, it'll kind of adjust that so you don't miss anything. What I also think is really cool is rear private sound. So say you're sitting on the sofa and you've got the rear speakers side by side, you can actually just have the sound coming from the rear speakers, not the front at all. So say it's nighttime and you wanna watch TV but you don't want it to be very loud. There's also sound grouping, so when you're listening to say just music, you can synchronize your rear speakers with the sound bar, uh, even if they're in a different room to get that immersive playing, uh, room filling sound in harmony. Game Mode Pro is pretty cool. It gives you a really directional and immersive sound experience, um, which is made for gaming. Uh, so it kind of tweaks it just so the games kind of are a little more realistic and the explosions kind of sound like where they should come from. And don't forget that you can connect this to smart things too, so you can see everything and control everything from your smartphone. Uh, and smart things now actually has a new sort of map where you can actually have a map of your entire house, see where each object is, and then control the objects relative to where they are with each other. Okay, so in terms of pricing, in Australia, we are seeing the 77 inch for $9,281, the 65 inch for $5,800, and the 55 inch for $4,640. The only enhancement that it's missing is Dolby Vision, and that is something that Samsung TVs have been missing for a long time. I don't know why they do this. It does support HDR+, but other than that, this is an amazing TV. It certainly steps the technology ahead and I think that the actual net result is something that is worth paying extra for. You can get a 2023 S95C, but if you want that anti-glare and you want those AI features that make the settings for you, this is definitely worth paying extra for. So what do you think? Has Samsung's S95D a big enough improvement to really get you to want to upgrade your television? Let me know in the comments. I'm Val Quinn, thanks for joining us for this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.